welcome in to game day two of the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament. A win and in scenario as Australia takes on Germany. Well, so far in the women's OQTs, we've seen Belgium punch their ticket, Nigeria punch their ticket, China and Puerto Rico joining the United States and France. They're going to be part of the Olympics in Paris in 2024. A win and in scenario in game number one, Australia taking on Germany. And a little later on, two teams that are going to be fighting for their Olympic lives in Brazil and Serbia. There are the standings right there. Germany and Australia coming in with a win in game day two. They had the rest day yesterday. They are back in action today. A chance to go to Paris and the Olympic Games. And Germany gets introduced to the crowd here on hand. They will be without two star players that led them to victory over Serbia in game number one. Satu Savali and Yara Savali sitting this one out. Satu with a left shoulder injury. Yara nursing a knee injury. Lisa Tomitis' squad will have their work cut out for them. But they were able to qualify going through Eurobasket, playing without both Savali sisters. They're very capable and have a roster to do so. On the other side, Australia intact. Everybody that played on game day one available here for game day number two as they are one step closer from going back to the Olympic Games, something that they're very accustomed to. It is the standard. You can't have an Olympic Games without the Opals, it feels like. Yeah, you can. I mean, they're just a stacked a stack team. They know how to play. They've been in this position. So uh, we're looking forward to see Australia play Australia basketball and be the Opals. They had a tough one in their first game against Brazil, a very physical encounter. The crowd was fully against them. They have a little bit more support this time around as some impartial fans have made their way into the arena. My favorite part of these world-class events is the playing of the national anthem as 12 athletes get to hear their national anthem and sing it with pride. We'll pause now to do so.
exchange of gifts, handshakes, even some hugs. These two teams getting set to battle for one ticket to Paris in the Olympic Games in 2024. Third team on the floor for tonight's game will be led by Leandro Zalazar. We have Mamenito Atab and Carlos Mea. Three officials for this contest win and in scenario between Germany and Australia. Carlin Gay alongside Ify Ibekwe. Ify, you played in the Olympic Games. You know what it means to qualify. You know what it means to get there. A lot of emotion going to be on the floor and off the floor for these two teams as we take a look at the starting lineup for Germany. And you'll see two names missing from the starting five. Two sisters, the Savoy sisters, going to be out of action for this one. We'll get to their injuries in a little bit. Those are the five that are going to have to lead the way for Germany tonight. Yeah, they're just going to have to lead the way for today's game. Uh, the Savoy sisters are not playing today, but I do think that this Germany team, it's going to be okay. They have experience not playing with them in certain tournaments, so I do think they're going to rally together and fight uh, for this game. This game is very important uh, to go to the Olympics. Lisa Tomitis, the head coach of Germany. She's taken teams to the Olympics in the past. She was the head coach for Team Canada uh, over the last Olympic Games in Tokyo, now tasked with getting Germany there for the first time. Here is the Opal starting five. And of course, led by Ezzy McGor, who had possibly her best game in an Opal's uniform in game day number one in the win over Brazil. I mean, she was tremendous uh, uh, two days ago, 24 years old. She's playing like a veteran play player. She was seven for nine. She lost her last, she missed her last two in the fourth quarter. And uh, she's a very poised and patient player. She lets the game come to her. And um, we're gonna see her do the same thing, I'm sure, tonight. Sandy Brondello has been here before. She knows it's at stake. She's been very successful in taking this Opal squad to the Olympic Games. You see Sammy Wickham in there. The leader on this squad did not shoot the best in game day number one. In fact, none of the two teams we're about to see play <laughs> shot the best from the field. We expect a more efficient game in this one. Now that the teams are acclimated, they're used to the floor. Now it's go time. Yeah, I think that, that first uh, game, there was a lot of j jitters going on and a lot of nervousness, but the fact that they had yesterday to rest and they're coming back, these two teams won that first game. So this is going to be an intense battle tonight. Uh, we're expecting to see bodies fly on the floor, shots go up, and, you know, playing hard and physical. So I'm excited. Yeah, it should be fun. A countdown to tip off presented by Tissot. Under a minute to go winning in scenario between Australia and Germany. Let's talk about who will not be playing in this game. Satu Savali picked up an injury late in the second quarter against Serbia. It was a left shoulder injury. That's all we knew at the time. We didn't know that it was a separated shoulder. She finished the game. Yeah, she did. And now sitting this one out with you. Um, yeah, she's sitting now. I mean, you don't want to put your players in that position where they can hurt themselves more. But the fact that she did feel something the first game, she continued to show the, her strength and the, the fact that she wanted to give her all in that game. And, you know, her sister is also Miara sitting now with the knee injury. We all know that, you know, she had those two ACLs. So it's, and she played amazing that game. She had 14 points and 17 rebounds. Miara, Sabali. So they're just, you know, I think they're just being, you know, conservative right now in protecting the players. You know, these are intense games. This is the battle of it all, this game between Germany and Australia, because the winner who wins this game already it punches a ticket to the Olympics. So I do understand as a coach's perspective, you want to protect players as well. German roster though, not, not, not accustomed to having the Savoy sisters. They went through Eurobasket without them and were able to qualify for this FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in fine fashion. Yeah, we see Luisa, number 15, Geisel Soder, who started um, in Olympic qualifiers, and she played amazing. So we do want to see that contribu contribution at this game right now because she needs to step it up. Yeah, she's going to get the start in place of Niara. 
and Vilke will get the start in place of Satu Sabali in the back corner. Off we go here for a win and in scenario. Australia takes on Germany, the two teams that won their opening games here at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in Brazil. Australia starts with the basketball, an early turnover, and it looks like at the bottom of your screen there, Nezi Magmagor picked up a little bit of a knock as she was trying to make a cut. She's holding her right side, and she needs to be okay at the moment. We'll keep an eye on that. So first offensive possession for Germany, who will be without the Sabli sisters. Satu Sabli sitting out with a left shoulder injury. Yara Sabli sitting out with a knee injury. Germany will have to go at it without those two. I mean, when you see Germany play, you just saw Vilka come off that pick and roll, and that's one thing that Germany did amazing at in their first game, coming off that pick and roll. You see Sammy would come, trying to run the floor, getting the floor um, open to Smith, but she didn't quite get it. Becky Allen coming off the curl, and Phoebe gets to the floor and comes away with the steal. Run course, Geisel Stroller. Vilke. Inside Gulick. Got Magmagor to leave her feet. Okay. And missed the shot, but it's going to stay here. Yeah, we see the same defense that Australia played against Brazil right here. They're sending people to that low block post pair. Whoever threw the ball in the paint, Australia is sending them uh, bodies to them. So they need to be aware of those post players face up, attack the basket, or, you know, shoot your 15 foot a shot. Wickham comes away with the steal. She's in the open floor, has Smith behind her, doesn't need her. First two of the game for Sammy Wickham, who struggled from the field in game number one here at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament. Yeah, she's the captain of the Australian national team, so I'm pretty sure she's going to step up this game. I mean, she was one for 10 in the first game, and I know as a captain and someone that has the Opal's jerseys, she knows she could play better, and I know she will play better. She had some open shots that she would normally make that just didn't fall for her. Here she is on the rock once again, coming up with a rebound. Tolo calling for it. Double comes. The ball movement by the Opals. It's Beck Allen for three. Off the mark, and Geisel Soder up high to grab that board. Again, the same thing that we saw in game number one for these two teams. A little bit of nervousness, nervous energy in this gym. A lot at stake in this game as Beck Allen comes up with another block from behind. Yeah, I would have to agree to that. This is the game to show what you can do and play physical from start to finish because whoever wins this game is punching that ticket to the Olympics. Smith came up with the offensive board. Whitcomb off the mark that time. Another offensive rebound vacuumed in by Smith. She's going to take it herself and put it in. The refs are letting them play, and I love that they let them play the first game. They're getting at it and, you know, being aggressive to the basket, and you love to see this in women's basketball. As soon as you say that, we get our first foul. <laughs> what is that, the commentator's <laughs> jinx? <laughs> Here it is. As Smith ran into Brooke Horse. Smith's first foul, and she'll check out of the game immediately. And that will bring Tess Magin into the game, number seven in gold. She sealed the deal with a layup late after Kayla George came up with one block, and Nezzy Magmagor came up with the other. Tess put it in to seal game number one for the Opals. Her first touch of the rock is passed on to Wickham. Wickham will pull the foul line, left it short, and a flat-footed rebound here for Germany, who has yet to score three minutes into the game. You would like to uh, see Germany attack the basket as they did. They got to the line 26 times, and uh, Fiebig did the same thing right now. She's attacking the basket. That's her game. And she's allowed it to come to her, but Germany needs to attack the basket and get to the free throw line. That helped them tremendously against Serbia. Allen turning the corner, speaking of attacking the basket. And puts in her first two. 
And also, Australia needs to attack the basket. They only went to the free throw line eight times during the Brazil game. So we want to see them, you know, be a little bit more aggressive. And we know Australia to be an outside shooting team, but attack the basket like uh, Allen did right now. Offensive rebound, long three. Fibet couldn't knock it down. It's a third opportunity now for Germany to finally break the ice. Runghorse, tough shot. And three straight misses on that possession for Germany. He's back Allen. Turns the corner once again. A bounce pass tapped out of bounds. Be 12 on the shot clock for the Opal Sword. One thing that we didn't see yesterday um, in the Serbia and, and Germany game was just the everything equal from the position of the starting point guard to the, the five position like on the court right now between Germany and Australia. The height balance is the same. They're, the statistics are the same. So this is going to be a really tough game and uh, we're going to wait to see that. The first timeout comes with 5.52 remaining in the first period to be Australia basketball with 12 on the shot clock. In the meantime, will these drop in to the German huddle? Lisa Tomitis an opportunity to talk to her squad for the first time in the game. Coach Tomitis, echoing your thoughts here from the first couple minutes of play in this game. A lot of perimeter work. She wants to see more movement towards the basket. Easier said than done. As you saw, Australia, they had a they hosted a block party in game number one against <laughs> Brazil. I mean, the, the coach for the German national team understands that their players thrive when they attack the basket. And that's exactly what you heard in the timeout. Attack the basket and be strong. A zone coming out of the timeout for Germany to come away with the steal. Lunacker's three, not there. And Tess Magin vacuums in the rebound. Wickham. Orrin Jackson now on the floor. A good pass inside as Magmagor with a great cut across the lane to free herself. I mean, they're just a pace. I mean, a, a patient and poised team, the Opus team. Gulick staring at the GOAT. On course. Runica. Shimmy Shake, her shot falls. First two of the game for Germany here. Yeah, that was Garnahar with her shot. She, did, she didn't get her rhythm in in the first game, so it's nice to see her turn around and shoot that 15-foot shot. Wickham inside. Magmagor drew two. And Lickside, so it's blocked. Runcorse back the other way. She pulls off the mark. And Wickham will cross the timeline. 4.30 remaining in the first. Lauren Jackson will take the three and knock it down. And she's just going to play <laughs> like that. If she's open, she's going to take her shot. She can do it all. We know the infamous and the famous Lauren Jackson, five-time WNBL champion, two-time WNBA champion, so she's all around player. Listed off the rest of her accomplishments. We'd be here all night. I know. I had to stop. is the <laughs> GOAT. Gulick inside. A beautiful move with the left hand. It's the first time Germany really got free in the paint to get a good look. Wickham staring at a 2-3 zone. See how Australia attacks it. Lipsops in 
to Magmagor. Test sees five on the shot clock. Pivots in the lane through two defenders. Amazing footwork by Tessie Beckham. 13 for the score. Will lick with the offensive board. She'll kick it back out. And the unforced turnover there as Boca could not handle that hot pass. Yeah, Germany needs to take care of the ball. They had 19 turnovers um, against Serbia. And just, you know, careless mistakes like that are not needed when you're playing against Sinopo's teams that, you know, will execute and dominate when you make the state. Jen Carter will come into the game for the first time here in the tournament. She's going to have to play some extra minutes with Germany shorthanded. And as a former player, you're playing in a game like this. You know that the opposing team is missing two of their top stars. Is it easier to be the team that's shorthanded or to be the team playing against the shorthanded team? I think it's, I think it's harder being a team that plays the shorthanded team because you prepare to have those players play and then they're not there. You don't want to be lax a days ago. You don't want to come in like, oh, because two star players are not playing, we can just, you know, wing it. No, you want to respect every team and you want to be focused from start to finish. And I think it's harder for Australia or for any team um, to pay players that you scouted and they're not there. Fiebeck behind the back, step back three. She had 20 big points against Serbia and did not force the issue. Definitely let the game come to her. And she's feeling she might need to pick up the scoring here. And she drills that last jumper. Steph Reed into the game now for Australia as Jackson gets fouled and she'll earn a trip to the line. I want to make a comment on Feedback's uh, 20 points uh, against Serbia. It was very quiet because she allowed the game to come to her. And as you said, I do think that she understands that this critical game right now, being that two players that, you know, played tremendous in the first game are not playing this game and she needs to step it up. She had 20 points and eight rebounds. And maybe she has to be a little bit more assertive. She is the type of player that allows the game to come to her. She doesn't force anything, which is great. But now that, you know, she's 24 years old and she's in this role, she needs to, you know, do exactly what she just did on the play before and get some points on the board for Germany. Jackson drills both free throws. That will allow Beck Allen to check back into the game. Kayla George also on the floor for Australia as they show a little bit of pressure. I really like this new <laughs> defensive Opals team. Like, I really, really like a defense for me, and I was always taught win the game, and the Opals are stepping up defensively, and I really, really like it. They're adding that dimension to their game because they're already good team. Definitely powered them to win number one against Brazil. Three on the way. Hartman drills it. Her first shot, first make. Yeah, and she did not play in the first game, so. It's a good sign for her as Tess Madgen responds with the three of her own. Every single player on Germany needs to step up, and I think that's exactly what they're showing now. Tess with now nine points and counting. The sportsmanship shown there by Kayla George as she caught feedback in the face. She's trying to swipe with the basketball. There's Tess showing the range. Foul on George. It's Crowder, who also didn't play in the first game, wearing that mask, a block up top. Crowder now driving. Throws it away. Once again, defensive pressure from the Opals, protecting the rim. Good block. I mean, that's a good matchup. You got Beck Allen defending uh, Feebeck from Germany, and she just goes up and blocks her. That's a good matchup to see um, throughout the game. Definitely something you circle. Very similar players. Yeah. Beautiful strokes on their jump shot. They have that long, lean body. Jackson's three off the mark. George tracks it down for a fresh possession. 
for Australia. Steph Reed looking to turn the corner. She was fouled. How about Steph Reed? She didn't rack up the statistics on the stat sheet, but in her debut for the Opals, definitely made an impact in the game in her minutes on the floor. She did. She was. She is the smallest player even in this game on the court and was in that game against Serbia. And, and she was getting attacking the basket. She was getting rebounds, you know, and she was um, making those smart plays and reads. And that's a great debut. It's not easy to crack the national team roster. No. For her to be able to do it in a tournament like this, all the credit in the world to her. We saw on social media her mom shouting her out after she was rewarded with this opportunity. She definitely made the family proud with her effort in game number one. Jackson inside. Oh, Jackson putting her foot on the gas pedal early in this game. Yeah, I can only imagine Reed's mom being so proud of that because I <laughs> know my parents are proud to put on a Nigerian jersey, so. Kudos to her and congratulations to her to be the part of the Opal. Under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Win and in scenario for both these teams. Isla Schroeder puts it on the deck. And she was fouled on the pass off. So no shot there. Good up fake there. Got Jackson off her feet and then ran into Whitcomb was trying to draw the charge. Could have went either way, honestly, in that scenario, but Whitcomb picks up her first. Phoebe stares at a three. Off the mark there. Hartman had a look at it to grab that offensive rebound, but it caught her by surprise and goes out of bounds. Shirley with a two-for-one opportunity here. And Germany once again settle back into that zone. Whitcomb from the corner. Off the mark. Fibet pulls it down and looks to push. Grunacher for three. She's off the mark. Reed ahead to George, ahead of the pack. And she lays it in. Good look by Reed. We have one possession to score right now. Hopefully they execute. A deep three there by Gruniker does not go. And a 14-point lead to start the game for Australia. After the first 10 minutes of play, Australia 24, Germany 10, in a winning in scenario for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. Some of the best plays from the first period. There they are as Australia using defense, turning it into offense, and making some shots this time around. They got out to an early lead here. 14 is the advantage. Yeah, you see here, Beck Allen just driving it to the basket hard, and that's something that Australia has to do. Not only settle for their outside shots because they are tremendous shooting, but look inside. You see that high low from Lauren Jackson to, to Ezzy, and she just makes it. You see the, semi, the shimmy shake from uh, Greidaha for Germany, and then Gulich doing what she does best, posting up strong. I mean, this is going to be a good game from start to finish. Even though the score right now is 24 to 10, it's, it's a long game. And uh, I do think that Germany understands that and knows that. They are playing with the players that they got them here. So it's not something that they're not used to, even though two of their players are out right now. I do think the reason why they are sitting in the zone is because they have less players. So um, maybe they could be a little bit more active, hands up in that defensive zone and just try to get those rebounds so they can put some points on the board. Moments away from the start of the second quarter. Reminder, scan the QR code on your screen right now to download 
the app, courtside, 1891 stream schedule scores and so much more extended highlights for this FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament and all FIBA competitions. Courtside 1891, your home for international basketball. Australia struggled from the field 35% in game number one. They're off to a much better start here tonight, shooting 56% from the field. And they're up by 14. So take a look at Sandy Rondello. She's been at the Olympic Games as a player, been at the Olympic Games as a coach, trying to return to the Olympic Games once again. And do the one thing that Australia has not done, and that's win gold at an Olympic Games. They've taken silver multiple times, including at home in Sydney. The goal is eluded them. The foul early on is the first team foul to see a battle there between Jackson and McAllen trying to trap Phoebe. Germany with 17 on the shot clock. And a double dribble there. You want to credit Steph Reed with that defense because she denied the initial pass. You do. You, we talked about adversity uh, throughout this tournament, and uh, Germany is faced with a lot right now. They have two players on the bench that are not playing that suited up on the first game, and just a little bit turnover. So you want to see, you know, the captain, Bronx Horse, get everyone together and rally them together and just stay consistent without this, throughout this game. Jackson tried to feed. Kayla George inside. The ball is kicked out of bounds. The shot clock will be set back to 14. Nice kick save right there. From nice little shoulder. Fibay does not allow the easy pass. <laughs> Surprisingly, Two seconds came off the clock there. It was a quick two seconds. 12 seconds for the Opals to work with. Allen at the foul line. Kicks to the corner. Whitcomb for three. An air ball. In that zone, they were a little bit more active. Look at Reed hustling back to try and get possession. Ball loose. Sontag finally comes up with it. Captain, you mentioned you want some leadership out of her. She's on the rock now. Here's Phoebe. Nice little shoulder. A lot better movement offensively for Germany on that possession, even if the make wasn't there for them. And where did they start? From that pick and roll that they've been doing all tournament. Good so block by Geisel Shorter, but Lauren Jackson, who has been active to start this game, cleans it up. Give Jackson nine points in counting. Turnover again. Lisa to Midas now. With decisions to make. As Australia looking to tighten the screws. Jackson will sit. And leave the game with nine points. Australia now up 16. McAllen, the foul line extended. Nice pass inside. Magma Gore, good footwork to get it up and in with the left. I mean, when she gets the ball in the po <laughs> in the paint, it's it's money. It's going to go in. Or she's going to get fouled and go to the free throw line. So as he's always taking her time and um, letting, letting the game come to her. Foul's going to be there on Reed. A little bit too aggressive that time. You're seeing some tired faces for Germany as Australia continues to ratchet up the pressure. On course the inbound. Captain of this squad. Sontag did not play in the first game, getting some minutes here now. Fibet with a nice cut, but was blocked off by Allen. Now she's in the post. Fibet, nice move over Beck Allen. A much needed basket there for Germany. Magma Gore draws a couple of defenders, was able to get it out, but fortunately not in the shooter's pocket for George. George with a nice slip of the screen, but could convert on the layup. Broncourse back the other way. Reinecker inside, looking for Sontag. It's going to stay here. As Wickham tapped it out of bounds. 
you you want to see Germany get back into the rhythm of how they play the, their game. And that was honestly attacking the basket and coming off of pick and roll strong. The post rolling to the basket fast and making themselves aware so their teammate can pass them the ball. I think that they need to just get back into their DNA and, and do that and, th and do those things. That last out of bounds play, Sammy Wickham was so convincing running back on the other side of the floor. She had everyone fooled except for the officials. So Germany stays on this side with the rock and pick up a foul. That's the third team foul now for Australia. A good sign for Germany now. Try to get Australia into the penalty and chip away at this lead with the clock stop if they can get there. Yeah, I think that, you know, Germany is down right now. They're trying to get in the rhythm of the game to run the play all the way through, but sometimes you could break it. Fiebig had the ball. She could attack the basket easily, but you know, you gotta pick your poison sometimes in these searching situations. Grunahart was blocked by Eski Magmagor. And then a blown layup inside by Grunacher. The moment does feel like it's definitely weighing on Germany. Kyle Schroeder came back with the rejection on the other end. Feedback for three. High arcing shot, and it's an air ball. Yeah, you just see the frustration in Germany, but they need to understand they have a long game to go. It's seven minutes left in the second quarter, so hopefully they pick up and get some intensity right now in this zone defense. It does feel like they're pressing a little bit. As you said, an eternity to go, not only in the game, but at least this quarter. Wickham. Allen stares at a three. Indeed. I mean, Beck Allen's doing Beck Allen things. If she sees it open on that three-point line, she's going to spot up and shoot it. And that's exactly what she did. She makes her shot, and she puts three more points on the board for Australia. And that's going to lead to a timeout as Beck Allen. The pretty jump shot drills it. it puts Australia up 31 to 12 with 6.42 remaining in the first half. We'll get an opportunity to e drop in to the German huddle here during this timeout. Sights and sounds of a win and in scenario. The pressure on both teams right now. Australia looking like they're dealing with it a lot better than Germany, up 31-12. Still plenty of time in this one. 6.43 remaining in the second quarter. And Lisa Tomitis talking to her team. You heard the passion that she talked to them with. Let's see if that spills over onto the court because it does feel like they're a little, little bit timid so far in this game. They're thinking a lot rather than just playing. You know, every time you, a coach calls a timeout, you always want to see something different in the way that these players are playing or executing in plays from that timeout. She missed three. She was open but couldn't make it. Front course in front of her bench. Can't get that to go. They battle for it. Last touch, they say, by Australia. We'll stay here. Germany basketball. It's a little bit better energy now coming out of the timeout for Germany despite the misses. Double dribble there. Renaha. Brooke Horse gets fouled. A late whistle, but it was the correct call. And she'll go to the line for two. Do you, do you feel that Germany is playing? They're playing with a sense of urgency because they understand, but what's the purpose of your sense of urgency? You're just playing out there, like rally together and, you know, stay together. And I think that 
I hope that this uh, <laughs> attack from uh, the captain Runkhorse starts the momentum from them. She makes these two free throws. Okay, Melbourne checks into the game for Australia. It does feel like they're playing fractured. It doesn't feel like they're playing together. Yeah. And they should. They should be very proud that they're here. I mean, they played extremely hard and tough against the Serbia team. And they got that win, you know? Having your national team jersey on and being having that prize speaks volume for itself. So at the end of the day, when you go on the court, you want to play your all and you want to give your all no matter what. Smith rattles home a mid-range jump shot. He's going to push the lead to 33-14. course fighting off Melbourne trying to turn the corner on Luna high for three can't get it to go Brookhorse with the offensive rebound okay it was open but didn't pull the trigger he's eight to shoot Brookhorse turns the corner nice pass inside Geisel Schroeder able to float it home and that's exactly what you want to see the movement of Germany and getting that easy look from Geisel Schroeder and it's her birthday today, so happy birthday to her for that two points. <laughs> that two points was an early birthday present. That is not a birthday present she wants, as Beck Allen drills a three in her face. Approaching the five-minute mark here in the second quarter, winning in scenario. Australia wins. They're going back to the Olympic Games. Germany wins. They go for the first time. Foul's going to be on Germany. It's an offensive foul. As Geisel Schroeder grabbed Beck Allen. There you see the Sabley sisters who aren't playing in this game. The left arm of Satu in a sling. She separated her shoulder in the first game, finished the entire game with a separated shoulder, which happened right at halftime, basically. And her sister, Niara, out of action as well, resting a knee injury. And to your point earlier on, she's had two ACL surgeries want to take precaution here. Now there is potential for both of them, we're told, to potentially play tomorrow, but sitting out this one with an abundance of, abundance of caution, they still have club, club basketball to play, they still have WNBA uh, season to play, and then hopefully the Olympic Games this summer if they're able to qualify as Melbourne turns the corner. And you know what, honestly, sometimes that's tough as a player. You want to be out there, you want to play, but you do have to think about, okay, I'm with national team, after national team, I have to go to my overseas team, overseas team, I have to go to WNBA team, and it's a long season for these women, so you do have to be cautious and aware and take care of your body, and so, and that's why they are sitting on that bench, because they need to, you know, take care of themselves. Yep, it's a big part of the offense missing here for Germany. And another offensive foul call. The other way. As Geisel Schroeder picked it up. Yeah, even though it's been very <laughs> difficult for Germany to score, we do have to give kudos to the Australian defense. They are being big. Their hands are up on defense. They're being long. They're clogging the paint. And it's very hard for Germany to score. Nightmagor is going to pick up the offensive foul, so no bucket. As just a tall girl problem. She was I mean, yeah, I mean, that was a good read from Magnin to see that Edgy had the mismatch, but she just got the offensive foul. But way to be aggressive and way to be there on defense. It's like sometimes you have in a play, you can have two good things to happen at once, even though it was a bad call for Edgy and she got the foul. Short defender on her, her <laughs> elbow caught her, yeah. caught the defender in the neck, and it's a sign of you being bigger than someone else guarding you. That usually happens. It's happened to me plenty of times as well. <laughs> Ruling. Wrong course. There's Vilke. She can shoot the three, but hasn't really looked for it tonight. This is good ball movement this time from Germany as Brunehaar drills it. That's a three. And just at that, like the last play when Brokhorst got the uh, ball to Geisensoder, just right now, it's the same. Moving the ball, getting it. More touches and more German hands to touch the ball for the open shot. It's obviously driving and drew the foul. There's a 13 foul here in the quarter for Germany. The Opals could finally hear the calls from Coach Sandy Brondello here in this gym. They could not hear them 
in game number one. No, you expect it was <laughs> deafening. Yeah, expect that tonight again against <laughs> Brazil versus Serbia. As a player, did you mind when you couldn't always hear your coach screaming and yelling at you from the sideline? No, it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this last misses the layup opportunity there. And of course, Hartman has one three. Again, a lot of perimeter play right now for Germany. Nothing inside. The job by the Australians just so big and long. Yeah, you, you know, who you have on the floor right now, Germany needs to be aware. You have Glukic on the floor. Go to her. Let her set the pick and roll and come up and be effective. She's trying to, you know, she's moving around from side to side, block to block to get the attention to give me the ball. Let me do something as anybody in the German jersey can do it, but she's one of the players right now on the court that should be getting the ball so she could be going to work to add more points on the board for Germany. And try to put Australia into the penalty. They're one foul away from that. Okay for three as the shot clock winds down. Lauren Jackson back on the floor for Australia, and they are an offense. Jackson's going to set this ball screen. Imagine looking to turn the corner. Good cut there by. Oh. Imagine for three. Tess has come to play. She Give really, her ten points and counting. Yeah, she's really is. She's a you know veteran guard, very scrappy guard that knows her role and she plays it very well from three-point range here in the first half. Of course. The rescreen, Gulick could not catch the basketball. You ask for the ball screen, they give it to you, and then they miss the opportunity there. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you want uh, Germany to do. You come off that pick and roll, you look for the rolling post, but they do have to be focused and catch that ball. You see Tessie Magan right here shooting her open shot and exactly what she's been doing, so. They just got to continue to take it possession by possession. Well, Kayla George, good ball movement. And another three for Australia. And that's Isabel Morales who drills it. And, don't and she's making a debut. And don't you like to see a veteran player like Kayla George passes it to the corner to the youngest player on the court and gives her that confidence to shoot that three. You love to see it. I love it. The time to make a debut for your national team. What a chance at going to the Olympics are on the line. And your first shot at the senior national team level is a three. Licks double team. Ball up for grabs. Jackson puts a fork in it. There's Borlace in the front court. Tess is feeling it. She just has a confidence about her. Another three. Rattles it home. One thing about Tess, if you get her going, she's not going to stop. She's going to keep doing what she's doing. If she's open, she's going to shoot that three. She's a tremendous shooter, and she can attack the basket as well. Three for three from three-point range. The lead swells, 47-19. Jackson with a good defense there. Outstretched hands. Melbourne looking for help. Good cut by Borlace. And Australia is rolling here in the first half. That was a highlight play for sure. 30-point gain now. Germany looking to find some answers. Under a minute to play as Jackson fouls the driving feed that FIBA will go to the line. Here with the clock stop, that puts Australia in the penalty. The youngsters putting on a show now for the Aussies. There's Tess showing you the range. And you here you see Melbourne, 21 years old, passes it to her teammate. Borlace, 19 years old, and she lays it up. And I think that's just an honor. And they're just so hyped to be on the floor, you know, playing with the veterans, Kayla George and Lauren Jackson. You also have Beck Allen. And, you know, they can look up to these players and play well. And you, you want to see um, that in the new generation. Building a culture for your national team program is so important. I know you were a part of that for Nigeria. Nigeria is still continuing on some of the culture that you've built qualifying for the Olympic Games as Melbourne goes to the line for two here. 
Yeah, I was just, <laughs> I watched, I talked to some of the players yesterday at Nigeria. And it's just such a proud feeling, you know, to be a veteran player and then see your young players and players that were beneath you play so well and tremendous and just have that pride. And as we can see right now, Melbourne is a part of that culture for the Opals. Got a sub here before the two free throws for Jado. Sontag checks into the game. She definitely embraced the role that she has now with the Opals. Every time you see her at the line without a smile on her face, walking around the hotel, she's just always happy as Kayla George with a big smile on her face after grabbing that rebound, puts it back up and in. I mean, that's just, you know, not being focused for Germany. You box out, especially when you have two players on the bottom. And then Kayla George just came up with that rebound. Okay, forcing the issue that time, got her own. Sante for three, and drills it. Shot clock unplugged. Really could hold for the final look. Melbourne. Well, Lace turns the corner in the lane. Are we sure it's her first game? <laughs> it is. It is. Izzy Borlace showing the confidence of a vet. Gets a high five from Kayla George as the first half comes to a close. Australia dominant here in the first half. They're 20 minutes away from punching their ticket to the Olympic Games in Paris. 54-24, your score after 20 minutes of play. Here are the stats from the first half. Australia rarely missed. Yeah, they rarely missed, and when you look at Germany's 19%, you just cannot do enough with that. You need to get the ball in the basket and shoot at a higher percentage. And 21 rebounds to 18, not that bad. Assists, 12 for Australia. You see the leaders right here. Megan with 13, and Fiebeck with seven. Jackson with nine. Ryan Nahar with five. Allen with eight, and Hartman with three. So Germany obviously has to pick it up. And Australia, what do you do when you come back out? Particularly play your game. Nine turnovers for Germany in the first half. Australia taking advantage of those. A lot of runouts and offensive rebound putbacks. Dominating, packing it in the lane. And it's been a total inside outside game offensively for Australia. But let's talk about the defense because in the first game, that's what led them to victory there. And really, Germany is a better offensive team than they're showing tonight, but Australia has just been locking them down. I mean, yeah, they came out in the beginning of, of the first the first game and showed that, okay, yes, we are the Opals, we know how to score, but now we're going to show you we can defend. They are a very different team on the defensive end, and they are stronger at the defensive end, and they're just, you know, playing tough defense right now, and Germany has to adapt to them. Every German shot that has made it into this highlight pack, you see an arm outstretched in a gold jersey. Yeah, I mean, every shot that they took, Australia made sure it wasn't easy. And that's what you want to see, and that's what Australia has to do for 40 minutes to play that tough defense. I mean, obviously another 20 minutes, and Germany just find a way. And they've had glimpses of that, but it was when three or four players touch the ball. If you just come down the short of the court, one pass and shoot it, it's just not effective right now against the Australia defense. So pass, pass, pass. Let Australia play that, you know, longer defense because they're going to, you know, mess up. It's a game of basketball, it's a game of run. So you just got to pick it up. Belgium has punched their tickets so far in these women's Olympic qualifying tournaments. Nigeria also on their way to Tokyo. China and Puerto Rico, they punched their ticket today to join the U.S. and France. The winner of this game will be joining them. We're 20 minutes away from finding out who it will be right now, Australia in front.
education, health, justice. We sometimes take these simple things for granted. They're not common for all of us. We are all born on the same planet, but not with the same opportunities. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are one. We are all on the same team. Let's convince those who never thought they would do it, that they can. We, we can. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No matter your origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Nice pass to Stewart. The foul on one. Stewart with a chance for a three-point play. Obinia. Your first layup is good. So Spain now have a three-point lead over Canada. Two minutes left. Touching some touches. See if he gets some either on the possession. Another block there by Saddle. It's gonna stay here with 70 feet. Studer. Uses the screen by Kiss. Sammy Hill moves with his feet though. Oh, good defense, but even better offense. Nice little step through. Scoop layup by Agnes Studer. Again, that's what we were talking about earlier on. Even late in the clock, they are positive and get shots they want to take. Plenty of time. Gets a beat set. Puts it up. Just the bleeding out. Hungry with a 53 to 48 lead in the end of three. Off the top the jab steps now attacking. Rejected by Magmacore. She swallowed that basketball. Back we are here in Belém, Brazil, for the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament. As Australia getting out to a big lead in front of Germany, 54-24 at the half. Here is some highlights from the top scorer for Germany as FIBA leads the way with seven points. She's had some trouble really getting free as Australia has made it a point to try and stop her. 
We saw what she did at Eurobasket. Was one of the leading scorers on the team there. But she struggled tonight, needing to pick it up in the second half. Yeah, I think it was a good call. It looked when the Australia found out the Sabli sisters weren't playing. They really looked and checked the the Germany roster and said, okay, who's next? And Fiebig is one of, of those players, and they're making it very hard for her to score the ball. They're challenging her. If you're going to score on me, you're going to score it the hard way. And so maybe this time when she comes out understanding that, and maybe she'll be a facilitator, she'll be an attacker, and then an, an extra pass out for her in this game. Top score for Australia. They've had a couple of players kind of put in work, but test matches come out. And she's put her foot on the gas here offensively for this team. And you could see it in the way that she's played. There's just a confidence every time she puts the ball on the floor or releases a jump shot, she feels like it's going in. Yeah, she's been very aggressive and tacking the basket and actually taking her open shots. Maybe we, when they played against the first game against Brazil, she wasn't actually doing that. She wanted to see the rhythm of how this tournament was going to be. She understands that now. They had a day off. She's coming in this game as a veteran player and knowing what she needs to bring to this table in today's game. And she's actually doing that. And she's taking her shots, and she's playing well. What's at stake in this game, you ask? A chance at going to the Olympics in 2024. Paris is the destination. The winner of this one will punch their ticket to do just that. At the half, 54-24 your score, Australia in front. As we're moments away from the start of the second half, we see Australia warming up. There are the leaders, the game leaders for Australia. We just talked about Tess Madgen. Smith with four rebounds. Whitcomb has been able to move the rock and get her players in position. And then on the other side, when you look at what Germany's brought to the table, Feebeck's lead leading the way for that squad. And you expect a little bit more from her offensively. We'll get to her in a second, but going back to Australia, they've got some balanced scoring across the board. Yeah, I was just going to make that call out right now. The leading scores of this game were not the leading scores of the first game, and you like to have that balance. And the Opals are just dominant, and honestly, every player on the court, all 12 can, you know, like I said in the first game, score 20, drop 20, have 10 rebounds, have 10 assists. So literally anybody on this Opals team can come out and uh, let that be the game. And I love the fact that they allow it. If a person or a player had 20 and 10 the first game and it's not their game the next day, they don't pout about it. They continue to uplift the players that are having that amazing game that night. And like tonight is Magan's game and Smith has four rebounds. So you're gonna see players throughout the Opals team step up. And I think that's a great way to learn your teammates and know that Whoever's playing against Australia know that they're a power force, all 12 across the board. There's Tess Madgen with the 13 points, adding two rebounds and two assists. By the way, Lauren Jackson, nine points. She knows the assignment. She's came out and handled business. And Izzy Borlace coming off the bench with seven points, making her debut for the Opals at the senior national team level. And doesn't even look like it's faced her. <laughs> no. I really like how poor she is and when she plays. And I've been watching her career, whether it's on the Opals or her overseas team in Prague or the WBA in Seattle. She's just playing amazing. On the other side, Germany going to lead a little bit more from not only Fibet, but Gulik, who is quiet in that first half. She was a force to be reckoned with at Eurobasket. Yeah, she was. And one thing, it's it's very hard, and I understand, because I I was a post player that moved and stretched to being a guard. Like, if I'm a big five, my my uh, guard players have to see me. So I do think that Gulick is trying. As you can see her, she's trying to put block to block, posting up. And the guards just have to be aware of where she's at. They need to get her involved in the offense, whether that's coming to set a screen and coming off that pick and roll, but they do need that offensive threat and mind from her. And as you see right now, Fiebig with seven points, one rebound and one steal, which is, you know, the leading score right now for Germany. And she also has to step it up. And, you know, she also is doing the best that she can with what she's got. So I do think this is gonna be a team effort from all of, all of them. We saw big time comebacks on game day one in both games. Maybe a big-time comeback here 
as Germany, a ton of heart in that locker room. They've walked out. Their faces show a little bit more determination than it did probably midway through that second quarter. Lisa Tominas has been in these situations before. She helped Canada get to the Olympic Games. Now trying to do that with Germany. This is a team that's not just going to roll over and, and say, hey, take this game. We'll look forward to playing on game day number three. And without the Sabalu sisters, we know what they're missing offensively. Now that's gone. First 20 minutes is out of there. You give it a wash. You try to win the next one. Yeah, and I think uh, any coach will tell their players during halftime, when you come back here for the second half, it's 0-0. It's not 54-24. It's 0-0. You take it possession as possession. And you could see the, you know, they're kind of ready. You can see it in their eyes. They understand, like, we're better than what we showed in the first half. So let's come out and at least play together. When you have a, a score like this at this time and this type of tournament, all you can do is take it possession by possession and tell yourself, I have nothing to lose. What do I have to lose? So go out there and play hard and play as a team. As a player, if you are right now on the Opals, what's the toughest thing to deal with when you're up as big as you are to start a half or a quarter? And not be lackadaisical. Continue to stay focused and not let the score be the reason why, you know, you let the game or you, you know, go down. You don't want that. You want to continue to play hard and continue to play together, which I doubt that the Opals will do right now. They are a team that's been in this highs and lows, and they understand that they need to continue to be confident and play as they played in the first half. Scan the QR code right now on your screen to download the courtside 1891 app stream, scores, schedules, and so much more from the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament here in Brazil and beyond. Getting set to start the second half. Australia basketball, they'll go from right to left on your screen wearing the gold uniforms. So we're just getting the clock ready to go. Possession arrow will be in favor of Australia until the inbound. And off we go here. Second half action. Australia up big, 54-24. Win and in scenario here in Brazil, the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament. Victor of this game will punch their ticket to Paris. And they will join Nigeria, France, the U.S., Puerto Rico, China, and Belgium. Much better possession defensively to start this second half there by Germany, but then they turn it right back over as Tess Madsen, leading scorer right now for Australia, passes it over to Whitcomb, who misses the three there. And of course, you ask for her to step up. She is the leader of this team, the captain. Turns it over again. Now the 11th turnover here for Germany in this game as Magma Gore with a nice move inside, and she gets the first two in the second half. And I can pretty much say that all those 11 turnovers were just not focused turnovers. And uh, Germany needs to tighten up on that. Fiebet, one foot jump shot not there. Ulit. The offensive rebound. Nigel Shoulders, three off the mark. Imagine directing traffic as she comes back the other way. Wickham. Magma Gore, back to Wickham. As she navigates her way to the rim. Sandy Brondello wanting the clock to go a little faster with the lead that they have. Isol Shoulder, nice move, falling away. That was pure. Give her four points in counting. She's two of five from the field. Kayla George for three. She's off the mark there. Offensive rebound. Tess misses that. And here's Feebeck calling for a screen. Doesn't use it. Feebeck right to the rim. Back-to-back -back baskets now for Germany. And that's what you want to see from Germany right now. Attack the basket, get to the free throw line. Their first game, they got to the free throw line 20-something times, and now barely even 10. Wild shot there by Whitcomb. It goes out of bounds. Even that time when it's a good defense. Here she is on the drive on the last possession. Rare time that Australia doesn't rotate over and cut that driver off. Yeah. 
Turner Hunt finds Phoebe in the lane, and Beck Allen fouled her, put her hand up right away as she can. Even though they had those first two turnovers in the the quick, I mean, the first minutes of this uh, third quarter, you like how they are trying to set up their offense right now. I really like the sense of urgency that Germany has right now. Gulick inside, missed the layup, and a late call was the right call that will send Gulick to the line for two free throws. As I said, they did an extremely great job the first game to get to the free throw line, and now they understand that that's exactly what they need to put points on the board. Second foul for Rezzy Magnador as Gulick knocks down first free throw. Call for her to be a little bit more active here in this second half. She was terrific at your Magnador with the rebound on the second free throw miss. 5 0 run for Germany. Tess Magnin put a stop to that. I think Germany can be a little bit more aggressive on defense. Haven't picked up a foul here in this quarter as Ankerborg comes up with the steal. Now running the break to the corner. Whitcup jab step on the drive. She'll pull it back out. Gets the return pass from George. Whitcup constant motion and gives it up. Bullock running the break. How about your big running the floor? Run course for three and drills it. And if and if Germany continues to play like this and get stops on uh, defense and take it possession by possession, this gap will close. Fight being shown by Germany here in the third. Whitcomb kicks it out. Beck Allen shows the up fix, steps in for two and drills it. Ten points and counting now for Beck Allen. Terrific shooter. There's Vilken. Feebeck using the Gulick screen, turns the corner. It's going to stay here, seven on the shot clock after his last touch by Strill. You see Feebeck here driving to the basket. If she would have cupped the, uh, cupped the ball a little bit harder, Kayla George wouldn't be able to get that, but it's still Germany ball. Simon into the game now, six in red. Get an opportunity to see here, get some minutes. And how about Coach Brondella going back to the youngsters? Jade Melbourne in the game, and Izzy Borlace, who played well in that first half, getting some minutes here early in the third. Imagine. Kayla George for three, and drills it. She hit the big three in the win against Brazil. Pearl's mom is on the board here in the second with a three, her first of the night. Yeah, the, her seven last, her seven points of the game of that uh, last game that they played was just at crucial moments, and that's what veteran Kayla George stepped up and made sure she put some points on the board for her team. Here she is on the basketball after picking up that rebound. Magbagor forcing the issue and gets fouled, and she'll have to earn him at the line. That's another dimension of Ezzy Magnabor's game, how she can get the ball in transition and drive to the hole and get the foul. A sweet stroke from Kayla George. The bench loving that. As Ezzy will toe the line. Might have played her best game in an Opal's uniform. Game number one. Both ends of the floor, she was fantastic. Made her first seven shots. Missed finally late in the game, but made up for it on defense with two crucial blocks down the stretch. She ended up with four blocks in that game. Yeah, she played amazing. 19 points, seven rebounds, four blocks. There's only great things for her in the future with the Opals. Tolo on the floor now for the Opals. Nice shoulder. Gets the pass. Nice job by Rumpos to find her on the cut. What have I said about Germany and that pick and roll? That's money. They are really good when they come off that pick and roll, but aggressive at their bigs roll fast. Over to 
or lace for three. She can't get it to go. How about the smallest player on the floor with the offensive rebound and Steph Reed? I know her mom's proud right now, training for her, huh? <laughs> Tries to feed it inside, gives up the rock. Leave that turnover on my partner. A little jinx from the commentary box. As Brooklyn now on the front court. <laughs> Brunkhorst turns the corner, looking for help. Instead, throws it up at the rim. Almost got it to fall. Jade Melvin back the other way. Melvin looking for help. It is Tolo. Borlace turns the corner aggressively. Counted and the foul. Izzy Borlace on debut, putting on a show. I love when the young players come in the game with no fear. They don't fear the talent on the court. They make sure they feel the same and they attack the basket or they make their shot or they make the extra pass or they do something to be like, wow, I'm here. I'm with the Opals. I'm with my national team and I will stay. Saw the reaction from her head coach. It's always great to see when the youngsters earn their opportunities in practice with their play, earn their spot in training camp with their play, and that translates on the floor in the big moments when the lights and lights are on. And you know what's at stake here? Yeah. A chance to go to the Olympic Games. And Izzy's pulse. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's not even. It might not even be. <laughs> her heart's not even elevated. She's out there small. Yeah, she's just playing her game. But the fact that they, she has practices with the Opals, has practice with the national team. And the fact that the veteran players encourage them, encourage them to take the shot, encourage them to go to the basket, it gives them confidence. It makes them feel like, okay, I don't have to worry. I just need to go out here and play basketball. You never want a youngster to come in the game and just, you know, be nervous or scared. So the name to the German huddle. As a veteran player, when I played on uh, my national team, <laughs> as a veteran, 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 why do I not have, I couldn't even say veteran, <laughs> sorry you guys. As a veteran player, we do want to make that lead established sure. so we can have our youngs play. That's all I want to say. <laughs> Hartman with a three from the corner. And those younger players on Australia right now on the floor, Melbourne, Borlace, and Reed joining Tolo and the GOAT. Lace gets a screen from the goat, attacking the rim, unable to make the layup there. She might have got bumped. As Milka now crossing the timeline. Our drive, Sante. Kicked out Vilka. Great defense by Reed, diving to the floor to gain possession. And a battle for the basketball ends up being a jump ball. It's going to be German basketball. But put that on a highlight tape. If we could put that in the top five plays of the day, we could bottle this up. That's grit, determination from Reed. I mean, Australia is just out hustling Germany right now in every single possession, and you just got to give your hats off to Australia, the Opals, for doing that. The officials are going to discuss as we get another opportunity to see Reed just attack that basketball. That's part of culture, isn't it? You build that in practice. You build that fight for your team before you get on the floor. Some teams have it, some teams don't. Yeah, smaller players on the floor, but one of the biggest hearts. So, I'd really love to see that. So, out of the break, it'll be Germany basketball, 22 seconds on the shot clock. 
the inbound. Milken. Reed still all over. Reinhardt. Australia's defense is swarming, but Geidel's pressure shoulder drills the long two. She now has eight points. She's going to pick it up here in the second half. Tolo had it dribble off her foot. Is able to get possession again. Needs help. Melbourne comes up with it. The pass the board lace is a little too hot for her to handle. An opportunity for Germany to run if they go quickly, but Australia getting back in transition, doing a nice job there. Okay for three. Left it short. Lace stole it from Lauren Jackson on the rebound. She wasn't going to wait for anyone else to get it. I mean, she's just in a rhythm right <laughs> now. <laughs> nope. Turns the corner. A little hesitation for this. There's more Lace. A lot of confidence right now in her play. Great ball movement. Reed for three. Indeed. <laughs> Great shot for her to step up and be confident. Her first three of the game. While she doesn't have a ton to show up in the stat sheet, she definitely changes the game with her effort. She got rewarded that time with an open jump shot. Sontag driving. Ball poked away. Here's Reed in transition. Reed attacking. Forced it up over Vilke, looking for the whistle. No foul call. Minute 30 to go in the third. Hartman for three again. Hartman has hit two threes now here in this third period. She's getting the opportunity to show that she needs to be on the floor, and so if she has her open shot, she's going to take it. It's three for three from three-point range overall. Tolo looking for it on the block. There wasn't enough space for her to get the rock. Now she relocates to the top of the key. Hands it off to Reed, who turns the corner. This time she was fouled. I mean, she just has no fear. She's just going at it, and I love to see it, because you know why? She's going to have to bring that tomorrow. She's going to have to bring that uh, if Australia wins this game to the Olympics. And for her to start now, she's taking that grind of heart, which is stands how many feet above her, going to the basket. Really, really like to see the, the effort that she has right now on the court. One of the things that stood out in Australia's first win against Brazil is how physical they were. Brazil, a very big team, a very physical team. The emotion in this arena kind of you know, raised the level and the intensity on the floor. It was, and the whistles were silent. Like, yeah. They were just letting them play. Australia's taking that same mentality here against Germany. It's another hard foul, fall there at that time. Jade Melbourne goes to the deck, and she just pops right back up as if it was a trampoline. Yeah, they're just taking it out of it. They're just being aggressive. That was one thing that the first uh, game, they didn't go to the line as much. They went to the line eight times, but now everyone, every possession, there's someone attacking the basket, whether they're going up for the layup or making that extra pass, it's always going towards the basket. And that's exactly what they need to do. And they're not letting up. Even though the score is 72, 42 right now, they're not even being anywhere calm right now. They're just taking it at them. It's really good to see. Melbourne splits the pair at the line. A little pressure shown by Australia as feedback now into the game for Germany. Two for one opportunity for Germany if they want. Lace all over Phoebe. Kick. Also showed her, her two off the mark. Hartman in there to grab an offensive rebound. Fresh 14 for Germany. Foul on the perimeter that time as Reed a little too aggressive. Second foul for Reed. Now we'll reset the shot clock back to 14. And an inbound for Germany in front of the Australian bench. Hartman got away with a walk. Fiebeck waits for Gulick. And Tolo got caught trying to rotate, but Fiebeck just beat her to the spot and drew the foul. Yeah, you can see right here. She's attacking with her left hand to go to the basket, but what did it start with? A pick and roll. And her coming off of that pick and roll aggressive to award her for two free throws. 
I always feel like if you can do something once, you can do it again. So hopefully we can see you just continue to see this trend off of, you know, the German players just attacking the basket. Basketball is an easy game. Could be a simple game. <laughs> yeah. Could be a simple game. Oh boy. Lauren Jackson and Gulick colliding. Gulick getting the worst of it. Here's the replay, left side of your screen. Gulick running into the left elbow of Lauren Jackson. Seems that she is okay. She got off the deck there. Good to see it. The officials will discuss. We might go to the monitor here. I have some subs instead. No need to review it. We'll play on. It's very interesting to see this sub change. Hartman goes out while Hartman was the key player in this third quarter with her three threes, her rebounding. So maybe she's a little bit tired right now, but she's definitely with one of the players that put more of the points for Germany on the board as she sits. The crowd isn't just cheering for the fine point you made just now. They came to their feet as Brazil entered the arena. They will play Serbia after this game. Crowd seeing them walk into the gym, gotten on their feet here in the left. As Lauren Jackson vacuums in the rebound off of the free throw miss by Boone. I would say Brazil for me, their fans, top three. One is Nigeria, two Senegal, three Brazil, as they have so much energy. Oh my god. <laughs> it was fantastic on Thursday night. That battle between Australia and Brazil. Great atmosphere. Goosebumps when the national anthem played. Players crying on the court at the sound of, of the crowd and taking over, going a cappella on the national anthem. They cut the music to allow them to do that. You see to Tolo getting fouled there. And she'll go to the line for two free throws as Germany's in the penalty. Tolo knocks on first. I expect much of the same, though, for our second game has a lot still to play for here in the lab. Three Olympic tickets available for teams. Feedback got it off in time, but just missed it. And that's how we'll land the third quarter. Australia, 10 minutes away from destination Paris. They're up 75, 45 after 30 minutes of play. chance to look at the stats from the first three quarters of play all Australia right now. I mean, even though the Germany statistics haven't proved, it's just not as much to even compare to the amazing things that Australia has done today. From their starting players to their babies coming, or the young players coming off of the, the bench, they've just played amazing right here. You could see the high-low to Eze. And then Sammy taking it in, understanding that any player can show up today and score 20 points. So it's nice to see other players do that for the Opals. On the other side, Jeremy showing a little bit of fight in that third quarter. Being down big, it's not easy to come out of halftime and try to show some fight, knowing that you still have another game to play. Sometimes it's easy to just look ahead and let go of the rope. Germany didn't do that in the third. They no. came to play. Yeah, and it started with Hartman. Hartman came in off the bench and played very, very well to help that momentum for Germany. See Izzy Morales, that was her and one opportunity. She's come in the game her first year in an Opal uniform and definitely impressed. Ten points and counting for her. And you would know that if you had the Courtside 1891 app. Scan the QR code on your screen right now. Screen, schedule, scores, and so much more extended highlights from around the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments. 
I love that transition. You did very well. <laughs> <laughs> Fans are starting to pack the arena here for this fourth quarter. A win and end scenario. Nigeria, Belgium, China, Puerto Rico, U.S. and France already on their way to the Paris Games in 2024. Ten minutes stands between Australia and their opportunity to join them. Off we go here in the fourth quarter. Jackson on the floor. Blitzavs, Smith, Allen, and Whitcomb. Here's Sammy Wickham. She turns the corner off the Jackson screen. Jackson will pull it up from the corner. Off the mark. And a rebound here by FIBA. She's on the floor with Crowder. Geisel Schroeder. Gulick. And Brughorse. And that's an aff offensive foul on a moving screen. Sometimes those suck because <laughs> <laughs> the posts have to be in their set spot. Right. And if the guard is going faster than that, it's the call is on the post. It's not, sometimes it's not fair. <laughs> but I have the privilege to experience both as a post player and as a guard. <laughs> so um, she gets that foul. Lulik picked up her fourth in the process, and Lauren Jackson just returned the favor. Who was that on that time? Should have been on Lauren Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> she picks up the foul. Yeah. It's her third. I'm Being in a position as a big, do you have a discussion with your guard? Oh, yes. When I was a post player, I had a discussion with my guard saying, you have to wait for my screen because it will be a foul on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's just, you know, being on the same tangent with your teammate. Ronaker, it's side. Feedback picks up the foul on Beck Allen. A great matchup between those two. We're playing high-level basketball, not only here in this tournament, but for their club teams. Thiebic has 11 points, and Beck Allen has 10, so they've been competing back and forth, as I said in the beginning of the game. This is a great matchup to watch. Thiebic now being guarded by Smith. Tried to pass at baseline to run horse. That's going to be out of bounds. Six seconds on the shot clock. I can only imagine what's going through Feedback's mind right now. She is a player that allows the game to come to her, but she understands the position that she is right now. She does have to step it up. She does have to be get the ball and attack and be more assertive than she usually is. So, you know, these are growing pains. She's growing up right now, uh, and facing that adversity and mental toughness in this game. Timeout on the floor for Germany will stay here. 9.07 remaining in the fourth quarter. 30 point lead for Australia. It's funny you say that about Feebeck, normally letting the game come to her. She had 20 points in game number one in the win against Serbia. And when I told her that in the post game press conference, she was shocked. She didn't even realize she had scored that many points. That's how she kind of allows the game to come to her in those moments. And right now she's having to having to force the issue, of course. Sabu sisters not playing. You see them in the background there. One arm in a sling for Satu. A knee issue for Niara. They've kept them out of the game for an abundance of caution. We've been told they may play tomorrow, depending on how the injuries are responded to. With Satu finishing the game with a separated shoulder in game number one. It happened right before halftime. She went into the locker room. We saw her reemerge with it taped up. Yeah. Didn't realize it was a separated shoulder. No. She didn't play like it was a separated shoulder. She did not. She did not. And you just love that mental toughness from players because, it, you know, that also gave her the, her team the confidence to see if my teammate is struggling and hurting right now, but she's giving her all. I'm going to give my all. And that's uh, probably one of the reasons, another reason why they won against uh, Serbia. Now the task at hand for Germany is to try to dig out of this 30-point hole and keep or have their Olympic dreams met out of the timeout and air ball by Ruckhorst and her and Beck Allen having a conversation down the court. A little talking back and forth between two players, and then they end up with the smile on their face. Were you much of a talker when you played? No, I was too tired. I had to get back on defense. <laughs> That's the honest truth, everybody. <laughs> okay, inside with the layup. Great steal turning into offense. 
Germany. So the first two of the night. After being a little timid, Vilke, in the first half, now starting to kind of get into the game a little bit more. Here she was on the ground, almost came up with another steal. Whip going with seven to shoot. Sammy open for three. Off the mark. And an offensive rebound by Smith. We haven't really seen her this game, but it's nice to see her back on the court. She's going to get a touch inside now. And she was held. Fouls on Fiba. Smith has quietly had four points, five rebounds in the game. It's the first foul on Fiba. She grabbed hold of Smith. Side to Jackson. Clear the side. Who comes out to help. Dumps it inside. Inside's trying to pass it to the cutting Smith. It's going to go out of bounds going the other way. So Germany now getting a couple stops here to start this fourth quarter. The string together a couple baskets. Try to get it within striking distance, maybe midway through this third. Or this fourth, rather. Feedback. Slapped out of bounds by Beck Allen. 2.6 on the shot clock as Abercourt checks in for Lauren Jackson. And Jackson is going to get a hand from her teammates as she exits the game. Big high fives across as she sits down. Tag will check out of the game as well. Germany going to have to work quickly. they got to get the ball in first. They do. Heineker, her shot off the mark. It's going to be a shot clock violation. I can only imagine the battle between Fiebeck and Allen right now. Uh, Allen played uh, for Valencia Basket in Spain, and Fiebeck plays for Saragossa. So they're not new to each other at all. Battle as Allen has the rock. Even cuts her off. Whitcomb. And it's an offensive foul on Smith. 13 foul for Australia here with 724 in the fourth. Again, as a former big setting screens. Who's that on? Is it on, is it on Smith or the guard coming off a little too The guard early? that one was the guard coming off <laughs> a little bit too soon. A lot of guards watching this game right now saying, hey, you're putting a lot of pressure on us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was the uh, first to tell Pay that I played the guard and the post. So. <laughs> Can handle both. Yes. Drug horse cut off nicely there. It's Whitcomb right underneath her. Fibet driving to the 10 and gets fouled by Smith. Can only commend her effort from start to finish. She understands what she has to bring to this game, and she's even though her shots are not falling, she's really attacking the basket. She's really trying to, you know, play that defensive game and rebound and do all the things that she needs to do for her team right now. Part of me, they gave that foul to Beck Allen, so that's Beck's fourth. It's the 14 foul for Australia, so they're in the penalty the rest of the way. And if you're Germany, that's kind of what you want. The only way you can get back into this game, clock stopped chip away and make the free throws. Speaking of the clock, it didn't start. McAllen will sit. Daisy Moore lace into the game for Australia. Vilke back into the game for Germany. And Gulit will come back into the game for Germany as well, 11 in red. She's playing with four fouls. If you look at the statistics right now, Australia shot 29 for 54 on the field. And Germany shot 16 off of 53. So they're getting their shots. They're just not falling. And when your shots are not falling, you have to contribute another way. And that starts with defense. So hopefully they get up and get at them right now. In these tournaments, it's always important to carry momentum over to the next game. Germany 
has one more game after this tomorrow against Brazil. Australia will play Serbia. Regardless of the result here, if the result stays the same, Australia will be back in the Olympic Games. There's Smith. Whitcomb come, comes off the curve. Smith. Agbagor a little too hot for her to handle. It's going to go the other way. Not a clean fourth quarter so far to start. We've only had three points. And a ton of turnovers. Plenty of time remaining in this game. 6.40 to be exact. Win and in scenario. Winner punches their ticket. to the Olympic Games here in 2024 in Paris. Yeah, when well, sometimes when games are like this, 75 to 48, it kind of can get a little sloppy. And you want to be careful for injuries and just like unnecessary play sometimes. So hopefully both teams stay aware and focused and finish the game out with the six minutes left. Yeah, you saw the turnovers on your screen there. 15 for Germany now, 12 for Australia. The foul is called. And if that's on Gulick, that's it for her. Melbourne back into the game, replacing Sammy Wickham. Smith will inbound, 14 on the shot clock. The foul was not on Gulick, so she still has four fouls and remains in the game. Crowder will check into the game at the next whistle for Germany. Melbourne. Three to shoot. Her shot off the mark. And vacuumed in by Geisenstrom. Australia still hasn't scored in this period. Sontag. Gulick. And that's turnover number 16 for Germany. And I believe in that possession, Luisa Geisenstrom should have just took her time. Back to the basket, face up, and made a strong move. The time is against them right now, so they're, they're going to have to play a little bit faster, but not in a rush, to get some points on the board. Nope. Izzy Bore Lace puts it on the deck, kicks it back between the legs of Nope. Serbia and Brazil lost their first game to these two teams. That's why this is a win and in scenario. Now, if Germany does not make a miraculous comeback here in this game, they still have a chance to punch their ticket tonight. They will be rooting for Brazil to defeat Serbia tonight, and that would help them qualify for the Olympic Games. There's three tickets up for grabs. There's only going to be one team going home empty-handed. Crowder in the game. Look with the four fouls. A series of moves, and she's blocked by Smith. Australia look to run. Magdagore on the block. Spins baseline as he goes for the rack, and she's fouled by Sontag.
take a look at Ezzy Magdor, told the free throw line. Feeling that you're going back to the Olympic Games, slowly sleeping in for the Opals as time ticks down in this one. You've had that feeling. What goes through your mind as a player in these moments? When do you allow it to, to kind of become a reality? Do you, do you wait till the final buzzer? When do you start thinking about it? You wait till the final buzzer. I knew you were <laughs> You always Tell wait till the truth. Buzzer. That is, you're retired uh, that's now. my truth. You wait till the <laughs> final buzzer to celebrate because you just never know. I mean, We've seen basketball. We've seen scores like this and just a momentum change. You never know, so I'm waiting. <laughs> Five minutes to go in this game. Gulick hit the side of the backboard. Crowder has it. Three on the shot clock. She realizes it, puts it up for three. Can't get it to fall. And Smith gets fouled as she collected that rebound. The bench is up, applauding the effort. Smith get in there. She got thrown down by Sontag. And because Germany's in the penalty, we're going to walk down the other end of the floor. It's his third foul by Sontag, and that will send Smith to the line for two shots. Smith knocks down the first free throw. When you look at this lineup for Germany, you do want to see Gulich and Hartman get in some type of rhythm, and, you know, be the veterans on the floor right now for Germany. And as Australia just continue to play their game as they've been doing since the start, they have some young players in right now, so I know that they'll get going as well. And just finish the game off strong. Borlace says, yeah, nah. Injection inside. And Looker put her on a show in the lane, the fall away not there for her. Hartman. Crowder puts her head down. Good ball movement here from Germany this time. Sontag misses the three, and another rebound vacuumed in by Smith. Even well, though, sorry, even though they didn't make that play, that was a good offensive moment for Germany. The ball was moving at a good pace. The players were moving with the ball, even though she didn't make that shot. Great defensive play there, there by Crowder as Melbourne gave the ball to Magma Gore and she went crashing into her. Here's the block by Bore Lace. Give me that. Steph Reed back on the floor for Australia, under four to play. As the result stays the same. Australia will be going back to the Olympic Games. Gulick. She's fouled, going to the rim, and she'll get a chance for two free throws. Smith picks up the foul. The body language from Germany, though, doesn't look like a team that is completely defeated. Despite the deficit in this game, they know there's still a lot to play for. Maybe they understand, like, we have one more game. Let's play tough and play hard and finish out strong. And that's all you want to do as players when you're down and you feel like the, your back is against the wall at this particular moment. You just play hard. Play hard to the end. Germany will still have an opportunity to punch their ticket should this result stay the same. And Brazil beats Serbia in game number two. So they'll turn into fans of the home team here and join the potential 11,000 plus in this arena. That's one thing that always brought me anxiety. It's like when you talk about the qualification and if this team wins, if this team loses, if this team wins by this much point, it gets technical with the game of basketball. And that just shows you that, you know, these teams, these national teams, are coming here to compete. But as Australia has this big lead, they're going to punch that ticket. And you have three other teams in this bracket that can, you don't know who's going to go. So that's always the nerve wracking for me. <laughs> Smith with the layup. Nerve wracking part for me is all the math that you have to do <laughs> to figure it all out. Luckily, we have smarter people than me on staff to take care of that for us. This one was easy, though. This was win and you're in. Yeah. As a player, obviously, you want to be in that position. 
foul as Crowder got hammered there. And she'll go to the line for some free throws. Willick will check out of the game and think about tomorrow. What a job Sandy Brondell has done with this program, the culture around the Opals. This is a team that it's just expected that you make the Olympic Games. But that doesn't mean you get there. You still have to put the work in. Yeah, they do. I mean, and it starts now in these tournaments. They start now. They start working together. They start making sure they're getting in their spots, sending good screens, because it builds that momentum. After their season ends, when they're with their national team in Australia working hard, they've already had these games under their belts where they can watch and learn from it. So this is a good thing for them. Saw Smith's reaction there. Look at the score, 81-51. She's still upset that she turned the ball over. In a moment like this, and now looking to defend. Crowder draws two. Tyson nice Schroeder on the block. Tough move, can't get it to go. Here comes Jado. Finds Reed. Sauce travel. Well, if it's one thing that you could nitpick about the Opals tonight, they did not take care of the basketball. No, they did not. But that also comes with the type of game that they're playing as well today, you know? So. They did a lot, a lot of great things today, so let's not, let's not take away you know what you're from saying? that. If we're nitpicking, <laughs> yeah. that's the one thing you can say. Yep. 16 turnovers, no one would be happy about that. Yeah, I mean, Melbourne that's, on the other side missed it. Yeah, that's not usually an Opal thing to have that many turnovers, so I definitely agree with that. But Zaps gets on the score sheet. Time ticking away under two to play for the Opals can officially celebrate getting back to the Olympic Games. That's going to be an unsportsman like foul as Melbourne will go to the line for two free throws. By the way, that Blitzlap's layup meant that every player for the Opals has scored a basket. Every time that happened when I was on the team, we would just be so excited that everyone got and able to be on the stat sheet and be able to contribute in some way, somehow. And you know, right now we're shooting. Two free throws and then the basketball for Australia. Just a, an unsportsmanlike foul is just not needed at this time. And that just comes from mentalness, mental toughness about the, you know, Hartman not making a smart read right now, and then maybe the emotions of the game just was a reason for this call. Melbourne will inbound with 14 on the shot clock for the Opals. Or lace inside. Smith can't get the scoop shot to go. A minute 30 remaining in the game, and Melbourne takes a foul. She prevents a layup opportunity for Geisel's shoulder. It's a good pass, though, to get her in stride. Got to reward the bigs when they do run the floor, right? You definitely got to reward the bigs when they run the floor. Saw Lisa Tomitis applauding that effort. So Germany will become fans of Brazil in game number two. And should Brazil defeat Serbia, that means that Germany will still qualify for the Olympic Games today. If the result goes the other way, we'll still have one more ticket up for grabs tomorrow. Smith. Looking for help. She picked up her dribble. Steph Reed has it. Let's ask for three. Can't get it to go. Guys will struggle with the rebound. Okay, we'll cross the timeline. What's one of the things that if you're Germany, you want to bottle up and make sure that you finish strong in the tournament tomorrow 
when you end up playing against Brazil. Yeah, I mean, that's what the game that's very important for them to come and show what they can do. The Germany team that we saw today isn't isn't how they play. And maybe it was just the knowing that the Satu sisters weren't playing. Maybe it was just the adjustment, the fast adjustment overall. But we've seen Germany play. We've seen how well they play. So this is not the end for them. And they have another game tomorrow. On the other end, Australia will qualify for the Olympic Games. They still have to play tomorrow. They still play Serbia. And that might be an important game for Serbia, depending on how our second game tonight shakes out. Three on the shot clock for Sontag. And slapped out of bounds. It's going to be a shot clock violation as Steph Reed not allowing anything easy. I was about to say, who slapped that out of bounds? <laughs> the one and only Stephanie Reed. <laughs> Great debut for her here for the Opals. And she's 10 seconds away from saying she's on her way to the Olympic Games. Germany won't foul. And your score will be 85-52. Three things in life that are certain. Death, <laughs> taxes, and the Opals in the Olympic Games. Congratulations to them, to the Opals, uh, to making it this far, to playing hard these past two days, and uh, qualifying for the Olympics. 85-52, your final score. Destination Paris for the Opals. No matter how many times you go to the Olympic Games, no, how many no matter how many times you see this, you get goosebumps. You get goosebumps. You get emotional. I know you've been through this. Talk me through what these ladies are going through right now. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now because it just took me back to the moment when, you know, when I was with Nigeria national team and we qualified for the Olympic 2020 Tokyo. And just seeing Australia right now, hugs and smiles and tears in their eyes and just rallying together because they know they earned to be here. They fought even coming third in America Cup in 2023. Now they're going to the Olympics. And they did it as a team effort, a team goal. And uh, you love to see that type of basketball and what this organization is doing. Hugs all around, even for the coaching staff. And Australia standing at center court. They'll get some caps. They'll also get a boarding pass. That says, congratulations, Australia. You're headed to Paris in 2024. Olympic Games. A lot of tears right now in eyes on the floor. So this really gets set to celebrate their victory here over Germany and their accomplishment of going back to another Olympic Games. The Opals are headed to Paris in 2024. And how about the GOAT? Going back to the Olympic <laughs> Games, she missed an opportunity to compete at the Olympic Games here in Brazil. She comes back to that very country and books her ticket to go to another Olympic Games. We talk about her resume, but those are just words on paper. Yeah. What you don't see is the hard work, the effort, the yeah. self-doubt that could have creeped in after retiring from the game and not going out the way you want to. And now you have the opportunity to rewrite your story. Lauren Jackson is a superhero. I mean, she's a four-time Olympian with three silver medals and one bronze, looking to make her fifth appearance with the Opals. I had the pleasure of playing with Lauren Jackson my rookie year at the WNBA, and she's a hard worker and a sweetheart. She's given her, her life to this game, and uh, I had the opportunity to talk with her on media day, and she's just like, I'm just here to push this younger generation and just see them continue to grow. And she's just so proud to be a part of this. And you can see her right now just smiling and giving hugs to the young ones. So kudos to the Opals. 
I hope that Australia really appreciates Lauren Jackson, one of their greatest exports, someone that the entire country could be proud of, not just because of her basketball accomplishments, but who she is as a person yeah. off the floor as well. And what an opportunity now for the next few months to really celebrate her and show her the appreciation for what she has done in the game of basketball. She is a true legend of the game, a three-time Hall of Famer, multi-time MVP, multi-time champion, and she's on a quest now to add that elusive gold medal for the Opals. And guess what? She retired from the game, came back to it, but yeah. she wouldn't have taken the spot. She would not have taken a roster spot if she wasn't up to the task. She didn't want to come back to the game and just steal someone else's spot just because she was Lauren Jackson. She wanted to work for it. She wanted to earn it, and she had done just that. And looking at the stat line in this game, she belonged on the floor with 12 of the best Australians in the entire world. Yeah, she understands that her role has changed. She's not coming in playing 38 minutes, 25 minutes. She's playing under 20 in both games, but she's giving her all. She ended up today with nine points and three rebounds and three assists. And that's probably what she, all she needs to do. And she understands that. And she takes it with pride, putting on those, that Australian, jer Australian jersey and playing for the Opal. So they're just all smiles right now. And they're so happy. You can see Kayla Jordan right now hugging uh, Lauren Jackson. You just love their camaraderie, camaraderie and their, their chemistry on and off the court. And that's why the Opals are the Opals. Take a look at some of the highlights from today's game. 85-52, the final score. And how about the youngsters for this Opal squad? Jade Melbourne, Izzy Bohr Lace. You talk about Steph Reed. They came in, played big minutes, and earned it and helped this team punch their ticket to the Paris games in 2024. 85-52, the final score. Australia is going to the Olympic Games. Serbia and Brazil, they're battling for one of the tickets. There's only two remaining now that Australia has claimed one. Woo! Congratulations, Opals. Enjoy the Olympics in 2024. One more game remaining here from Belém. It'll be Serbia and Brazil, and we, we can't wait for it. The Opals came out from the start, and they dominated on both ends of the floor. And they come away with the 85-52 win. The Opals are going back to the Olympics. <laughs>